Uh, if we could, we'll start with uh, roll call. Chair Squaga. Here. Councilman Bybee. Here. Mr. Murray. Here. And Mr. Chapman. Here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll open it up for comments from the floor by the public. Uh, that is kind of okay. Yeah. No, no uh, correspondence email. <laughs> yeah. I do, I'll move to item C, approval of the agenda. I do, would like to just point out, it looks like E1 and E2, preferably I like to flip them. One is approval of the overall budget. E2 is approval of the capital plan. And I think for the sake of flow of conversation, we'll want to do the capital plan inspection and then it'll all flow in. So that works for everybody. I entertain a motion. I like to make a motion to flip. I'll second. Yeah. Okay. Oh. And you have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, we'll move to item D approval of the minutes from uh, the March 6, 2023 meeting. Did everybody have a chance to look at that? Mm -hmm. I made a motion. Okay. Motion by uh, Member Murdoch. I'll second that motion. Okay. Thank you. It's faster than me this morning. I'm a little slow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And we'll get into the meat of it here. We'll just move. Uh, so now we'll look at item E2, and I'm going to pass it to Ms. Yeager, and she can give us more of a detailed breakdown of our capital plan. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. I didn't mean that. And I'm sorry. I didn't. Charlie, do you have any comments on that? I didn't. I just, no, we can go. Okay. There's a, uh, I'll let Courtney drive this. Okay. Go ahead and kick it off. Good morning, Courtney Jager, Vice President of Finance. Today we're presenting to you the President and CEO's proposed capital improvement plan for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2024. As a reminder, approval from the Finance Committee today would be advisory only, and the capital plan would not be adopted until approved by a quorum of the full board. So first is our agenda for this presentation. We'll start off with an overview of the capital plan, review fiscal year 24 proposed capital projects, and give a status update on projects that were budgeted during fiscal year 23. So the capital plan identifies capital improvement projects for the upcoming year. The RCDA funds capital improvements for the Reno Sparks Convention Center and the Reno Sparks Livestock Event Center. Contractually, improvements for the Reno Event Center and the National Bowling Stadium are funded by the City of Reno. We will occasionally fund certain projects at those facilities based on need or available funding, which we did in fiscal year 23 and will be doing again in fiscal year 24. And when building the capital plan, we assess the needs of the facilities, considering different priorities like safety and functionality to determine the projects that we should address within the next year. This year, capital projects are. I'm sorry, just one second. We're just trying to get caught up on. Okay. We're, we're trying to follow you. Yeah, um, you. There should be a tab called capital projects for them. There's FYI capital. Next I got that. Just the overview, and then I go to the. Where's the? Right here. Just, oh, just a oh it's yeah. just so stiff. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> this is the first page of the capital plan. Sorry about that. Yeah, so I just condensed it a bit so it's not sure. as long as what you guys have. Sure. This year, capital projects are budgeted at $4.2 million. Um, and we'll move on to the next page of the capital plan where we review the post. Capital projects for fiscal year 24 in detail. We'll be on page two of the capital plan, um, and Trent is going to go into more detail regarding those projects. You ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. You're ready. Okay. So, on our proposed capital for fiscal year 23 24, um, we've got 4.293 million slated out for it. And I'll go over some of these if you want them in. Detail that's fine. If not, just kind of have me pass over them lightly. But 
at the beginning is over at the convention center and it's resurfacing a parking lot and that's going to be D, E, and F, which is predominantly the south end of it when you come in off of Kitsky and loop around the south end of the building it's pretty torn up it's we've got some major cracks developing over age so we need to get in there and actually repave it um <clears throat> next one is over livestock event center very similar situation where we're looking at the north parking lot and that's going to be more of a seam seal and, and crack fill try to get the best bang for our buck because we're still concerned that if uh heritage gets in there and Redoes, reconfigures re, re, the livestock event center. We don't want to waste a bunch of money on pavement if they're going to tear it all out. This is more of a safety issue. Um, back to the convention center, we've got the AMR restroom remodel. Those are the AMR as the A meeting rooms. And we have two restrooms in there that are separated, uh, men's and women's, that are very old. They were probably about 2000, 2000, somewhere in that range. Anyway. They're dated, they need to be upgraded with fixtures and counters and flooring and the whole nine yards. And it'll bring it in line with the rest of them that we've done. Um, cooling tower repair at the convention center. They're old. They, yeah, we've been repairing them, uh, putting band-aids on them. Now this is a full repair of that cooling tower number three. And that has to do with your HVAC, obviously, and it's uh, the ability for your chillers to run. Try real quick. So you said it's failed completely, but you're able to repair it. You don't have to replace the whole cooling tower. On the cooling tower, this mm -hmm. is going to be essentially a replacement. We've been repairing them. Okay. And they've gotten to the point now where the materials are fatigued so bad you can only put so much band-aid on it to keep it running. And yeah, probably parts too. It, it, the whole thing. The whole thing. Yeah. The HPC. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, next one down is furniture. This is looking at furniture in this building, the admin offices and the admin offices of the convention center. We have very dated material. Uh, we have some of the underlaying of the desks. If you swivel your chair, you're going to tear your clothes. I mean, I'm seeing some smiles over there. We need to replace and refresh the furnishings. We actually bought the furniture from the old place here. We moved in here. We and the same thing next door. They're even older. So we need to look at replacing the furniture because it's just it's falling apart and it's uh, cutting clothing and whatever. Um, runway windows. This is at the convention center, and these would be the west facing windows that go down the front of the ballroom. This is not a window replacement, this is all of the weather stripping and sealant because when we get rains, it's just like we had drastic this year, um, it leaks inside pretty bad. So we want to go in and replace that. Um, obviously, we've got a capital reserve in there. Uh, next one down is family restroom conversion at the convention center. We have no family restroom. It's men's or women's. And this is something that the clients have been asking for a lot. So we have one that uh, we can target, be centrally located. and. We can kind of take care of what the clients are asking for. Next one down is the skylights. This is the same similar thing with the runway windows where we need to get in there and seal them correctly. Um, they leak and it's right over the main concourses. The hot water tank and heat exchanger at the convention center. This is the same thing. It's very old equipment and it just needs to be replaced. And that has to do with our HVAC system also. Um, Replacement of aging IT equipment. This is kind of a, an ongoing battle that we've been fighting with all of the properties. We're trying to stay current with our AV needs and IT needs. And this will get us closer to being up to, up to state on or up to uh, good status on that. Next one is the mags. Those are your security mag detectors when you come in for a concert or whatever. And these will be a pass through, not a wand in. And we have some at the convention or the event center. They work great, but we need some down at the convention center. Uh, replacement of vehicles, those next three, we have very old equipment, whether it be the vans or the pickups, and we need to kind of come into the modern era. Uh, digital wayfinding at the convention center. This is all of your monitors, like we have around us, whether they be vertical or horizontal, 
and that's for direction finding for the clients and shows that we have coming in. Um, the spike lights, what that is, is we are replacing the traffic spikes around the convention center. And we also need to replace the lights that warn you from the outside not to pass over them the wrong way. So they stand out. Um, <clears throat> tents of barriers, um, those are needed everywhere. And this is to fill in the gaps that we have down at the Bowling Stadium and the Event Center. And those are your barriers that are traffic control, that work for concessions, for any number of things. Um, the dump bins are an easier way to move trash out of the halls when we can't get big equipment in there, when we want to work along with the clients and get it out to the big dumpsters. Uh, office windows, this is over at the convention center. Um, the main admin offices, those windows are really in bad shape. The seals on them are gone. There's water inside, moisture inside a double pane. Um, you can hardly see it through them. Outdoor loading dock lighting. We are all metal halide lighting currently. Uh, we haven't switched that over to LED, and that's the purpose of this. And this is at the convention center. Uh, again, at the convention center, the admin break room. We have a very tight space with the break room and the restrooms that are in the same opening, essentially. We want to put a dividing wall in there. Um, carpet mach shampoo machine down at the Reno Event Center. Especially when we're doing the renovation in the suites, we do carpet. We kind of like to keep it that way. So we want to put a new machine in there to take care of the carpet and the other carpet in the other areas. And then the sales, the trade show booth, that's upgrading the existing one that we can go to different trade shows. And the sales office furniture is consisting basically of chairs that they need in, uh, to replace the old worn out chairs. By the way, if I can just make one comment on the trade show booth, uh, sales actually wanted to do about $100,000. We, I, I cut that to 50, and one of the reasons that we're doing that is we are lowering the size of our trade show booths, uh, which will allow us to go to more trade shows. Instead of having a larger footprint costing us more, this hasn't been updated in quite some time, and so that needs to take place, and it allows us to take it to, to more shows than lugging around a 20 by 20 booth. So, bas so basically, <clears throat> nothing, um, nothing glamorous. It's all <laughs> this is all so just all the basic things that predominantly for age we haven't been able to do. Correct? Yes, that's exactly it. And some of them have been on kind of our wish list for a mm -hmm. few years, and just because of other things, other projects that make <clears throat> priority, we put these kind of on the back burner. But they're they're getting to the point now where we just can't avoid them. This was ranked on Trent's list when we went down when we funded the more than nine million dollars this year that we came through, but this did not meet the cut, and so right. we just kicked it a year for a lot of this stuff. Yeah, I mean, if you again, you never get caught up, right? You're always, but it's yeah. at least it's not hair on fire. We've got to get you know, I think the nine million last year that helped. There's a lot of basic hair on fire deals, uh, yeah, our roof replacement stuff like right. that, and we have from last year's budget going into the summer now, hopefully, that we can start attacking that last roof section of the convention center and we'll be pretty good. And then obviously further down the road, you start that revolving cycle again with the different roof levels. Trent, how did have, with the really tremendous winter we had, how did those roofs, and especially that we hadn't finished them, how did they? We have some issues. That we're, I mean, I, there had to be issues, sure. but. Yeah, we had some issues and that's the one we're going to attack that are coming up right away. Okay. But we were able to get up there and find the obviously some patching. And we've been doing that continually. And as soon as we got a little bit of a dry moment, we get up there and patch, whether it be the stucco or the roof material or whatever, and kept our leaks, I'd say to a minimum relative to what they used to be. And we were able to stay on top of them because they were fairly known where they were going to penetrate through. So we could get in there and move ceiling tiles out of the way or put buckets underneath them to catch the water and kind of stay on top of it. For the most part, uh, most of it went unseen by the public. There were a few areas that obviously were there, but uh, they stayed on it really well. And if you look at the load going into the next budget, on the left-hand side of the pages is your to-do list. Uh, the adjacent page next to it is what's been completed in the current fiscal year, 
page two, if you go behind it, that's still what they're working on. There's still a lot. There's, there's no shortage of projects that the Trent and Jose and team have to be able to fulfill both in the current fiscal year and next year as well. You're missing. Great. It keeps you going. Good stuff. It is um not trying to get too in the weeds, but on, on the IT aging is is a hundred thousand adequate from well there's two that things in there. We also have a budget for AV equipment. Okay, so that's gonna be lighting Separate. and speakers okay. and whatever, but they kind of interact with each other. So yes, um it would be nice to have a little bit more to finish off some things, but we also have that in an AV budget. Okay. So we're able to and this is more client driven. This is not so much office infrastructure and things like that right correct. it's yeah. good guess the group checks in they want wireless uh, yeah got it correct okay and then just one kind of net noise question when, when we do off these old vehicles how does that how do you do that well you go to tnt auctions okay. and the auction them off um, that's what we're required to do but how as you can see that unless you're talking 20 plus years and oh, all yeah that, 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 yeah they're, 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 they're totally okay. and in fact the uh the Ford that's on this list down at the bowling stadium, I bought that used and at a great price. Right. And it's been a good vehicle, but it's a little long in tune as the others are. Yep. And this clip, is, is there a way we could get the sign fixed on the on the REC and build the city or however we want to do it? What is the cost of fixing that sign? Yeah, it's, like, it's a horrible. It's a, it's a horrible sign. This, this, so I've talked to Mr. Thornley about that. And one of the things that, that we brought up is when we put in the $513,000 for yeah. the improvements on the suites, we asked the city step up and, and do that. Now, Trent has been talking with people at the city and including the $2 committee, and he, he actually bid that out. And well, I, I, I recall, was it about $180,000? It, yeah, depending on what specs they want, what clarity they want, whatever, you could go the gamut. So, yeah. So, so with that, Mr. Murdoch, we're working with the city. We've let them know that's resting on the $2 committee, to my knowledge, that they have to kind of move that forward as we're busy with the, the suite right. moving that. Any other questions on the fiscal 24 proposed projects? Yeah. Good. Any, any questions? Okay. Andy, Eric, are you there? Just uh, one question. I don't know if this is the appropriate spot. I know there was some conversation and probably future conversation about an indoor track. Where, do, where does that discussion fall, whether a capital discussion or, or what, what is that? If, you can and that's that. going to be an item that comes up for the May board meeting. It will not be uh, slated in the budget for 23-24. And so when we do the pre-board meetings, we'll go through the, the options and, and what, we, what we're what we going to present, but that's not in the current budget. Thank you. Yep. No other questions. Thanks, Andy. Okay, all right. So if we're uh, good with this, we'll go ahead and move on. Move on. Um, we did want to review with the committee um, an update on the projects that were budgeted during fiscal year 23. Um, we've completed a good portion of these projects, and it's typical for projects to take longer than a year to complete. Usually, um, we have projects that overlap between fiscal years. This year, we did see some delays due to continuing labor shortages and supply shortages. And again, for carry forward capital projects, we aren't requesting new funding. They'll be completed using funds from the fiscal year 23 budget. And we did want to give us the committee just a brief status update on those projects that were budgeted during fiscal 23. So here we have a list of completed capital projects. Try to run over some of the larger ones that we talked sure. about. <clears throat> we have the uh, right at the top convention center, the lighting control system. And there's also the third one down the HVAC Delta system, and they're kind of go hand in hand. It's the controls of the HVAC and the lighting, and it's a completion of a project that we had started uh, four years ago, roughly. And this is completing the areas of the building that weren't hit at that time. And this, again, is customer driven, safety driven, the whole nine yards. So our security has better control. Instead of having to go out to rooms and kick stuff on manually, you can do it from one central location. <clears throat> um, the staging, we purchased new stage decks. This is for the convention center that uh, to replace the aging ones and supplement our, our inventory with more items so we can have more events at the same time as sales has been doing a great job filling the place. 
um, large screen projector that was put in at the bowling stadium, and that was uh, to get that one up to snuff uh, before the tournament started, and we got lucky and got it in just before the tournament started, um, which is working great. Um, footing replacement, this is inside the main arena over at RSLEC. It's essentially your fancy dirt for different horses. How often does that have to get changed up? It depends on usage, okay. um, but for the most part, uh, they do it approximately annually. Every year. Yeah. So, and if we yeah. have more events in there that wear it down faster, then we look at replacement sooner. What's that cost? I believe it was about 50. So usually, usually about 20 to $30,000. On the high end, when we haven't replaced it, you know, but then that one year period it can go up, as Trent mentioned about 50. Yeah. Yeah. Um, vehicle replacement. This has to do the same thing that we're looking at this year. We put two new vehicles at the convention center, uh, pickup and a van. Uh, power drops over at Livestock Event Center. This has been something that's been requested by clients for a long time. We would have to plug into a panel, tape a line across the main arena into the, the lower, and this is the inside arena. And we would have four areas where power was coming and it puts a trip hazard and it looks bad and it's difficult to work with. So we put power drops in there. Um, show panels, we replace those. Uh, this is for the livestock for direction of the cows or the horses or the sheep. Um, traffic spikes, that goes back to the traffic spike lighting. This is again for the traffic spikes of cows. <laughs> Mini estimator over at Livestock Event Center. This is equipment that has um, been needed and it's already getting good use. Um, barns and stall repairs over at the Livestock Event Center. Again, this is old and damaged equipment that just needs to be brought up to safe standards and, and uh, needs to be done. Over at the Convention Center, the indoor vehicles, those are Taylor Dunn's, those are little battery powered carts that move equipment, supplies, people around the convention center, whether the ones that we have are old and pretty decrepit. Um, Porta coolers, this is for, again, the Livestock Event Center for assisting with the cooling system inside the main arena. Um, a floor scrubber over at the main arena that we've got quite a bit of concrete over there and it makes it a lot easier to keep that clean and turn it around, especially when they've got a lot of back-to-back -back shows. Crowd control barriers. This is Convention Center and RSLEC. Um, same thing, it's being able to direct and control the crowds, you know, for concessions or otherwise. Handheld radios, same deal. This is over at Livestock Event Center, um, just upgrading old radios that aren't functioning anymore. So we're just stuck on many little new radios, two way radios for communications. Um, office furniture, this was for. The show offices inside the main arena, the furniture that was in there was very old, very dirty, very torn up. So we replaced that. Um, stall padlocks. This was to padlock all of the stalls so they're at the same lock instead of having multiple locks and having to carry a big key ring, or whatever. It makes it easier on the clients also. Um, poster and banner printer that's over at Livestock so they can print off their own information for clients as opposed to putting a request in the convention center and have them take it down there and the communications got a little mixed up and you have to redo it again now they can put it on property great any, any questions on the trends recap of the completed projects what a good start perfect and then the last item that we have to go over are the carry forward capital projects. Um, this will be pretty hard to see on the screen, so you'll want to look at the list in your packet. Um, it's a pretty long list, so if there are any questions on any specific projects, we can answer those questions, or if the committee would like Trent to give an overview of the larger projects, we can do that too. This, this is all stuff that's been pre approved by the board. Yes. It's kind of in progress. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's exactly what this is. You're in progress from past fiscal and existing fiscal. But we're still in the middle of. Do you uh, you make money on your AV equipment when you rent it to groups and come in? Yes, that's how you guys do that. Yeah, you get, you get, you get that back. Yes, portion for sure. Yeah. 
Andy, any any questions either on completed projects or, or projects in process? Uh, none for me. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I appreciate the estimated completion dates to kind of give us an idea. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I know these are es the estimates, but also. yeah, goals. Yes. <clears throat> Well, if there are no other questions, we can go ahead and wrap up capital plan. Unless there's anything else anyone wanted to discuss related to capital. Let's do that. Thank you. Cool. Next would be a motion that we're committed to approve. <laughs> any any questions, anyone? If not, I'll entertain a motion for and then to approve. Uh, uh, one second, if I may. Sorry. So historically, we spent 9.5 last year. Not historically, just last yeah. year we did, but yeah. usually it's been around somewhere between three and four million. So you guys really, I'm just, what Stephen alluded, what said earlier, 9.5, and now we're almost in half of that. Correct. And that's, you guys feel like that's staying in line with what we need to do to stay current for business and this shop, the seller. So, it's what the budget allows us to do uh, okay. based upon all of our resources. Let's not forget that in the current fiscal year, we had um, the grant money that allowed us to, to, to so uh, that's where you got the, elevate the extra dollars. That's where you got the extra five. Okay. What is the rough gate? I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm Go ahead. ahead. There's a percent, right? That we tend to. Is it written in? It is. So, in our strategic funding policies, the board um, would like us to go up to 10% of annual total okay. tax collections. Yeah. And that's right where we're at this year with what we budgeted. And that's not statute, that's just our board driven yeah. policy that was already. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. we definitely exceed that. And in years where we don't have the funding, we go under, but that's our ballpark range that we strive for. Okay. Thank you. Okay, you ready for a Okay. Um, I move to accept the um, the capital improvement plan for fiscal year 2023-2024 for the RCBA. Um, I guess that's all, just to accept Great. the proposed capital improvement plan. Okay, so, so, we, right. take the board. so, so we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Member Murdoch, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I yeah, move that forward. We'll move to E2. Um talk about uh potential direction regarding the budget for fiscal year 2023-24 for the RCB. Ms. Yeager. Okay. So today we're presenting the president and CEO's proposed budget for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2024. And again, as a reminder, approver, approval from the finance committee today is advisory only, and the budget won't be adopted until it comes by the full board. So first is our agenda for this presentation. We'll start off by reviewing the funding policies in place for the strategic plan. Then we'll review general fund revenues and resources, general fund expenses, and review the RCDA subject funds. I'll move through this presentation at a good pace, but feel free to stop and ask questions. The budget is largely guided by the board's spending policies for the strategic plan. So we'll start off with a discussion of how those policies will be addressed in the current budget. The first is the policy related to general fund reserves. Policies related to general fund reserves have been in place for many years, and the current policy calls for 15 to 17 percent of expenditures to be maintained in ending unassigned fund balance, which is essentially two months of operating expenses. The budget supports that amount, but it's really also going to depend on activity throughout the year. We reconcile fund balance at year end, and each year we report back to the board on that final audited fund balance figure. So the next policy, like we just discussed, directs us to dedicate up to 10% of annual total green tax collections towards capital, and our capital budget this year meets that funding policy. Next is the rainy day fund. The current balance of the rainy day fund meets the board's funding policy, and we have direction for a 10 to 20% increase in fiscal year 24. Jack, what's in the rainy day fund? And so by the end of this fiscal year, we're projecting a little over 1.5 million. And that's up about 50 percent since I started it. It was depleted before. We want to make sure that for the next pandemic or other issues, we can fund staff and not have 
cuts to that fund. The next for capital reserves, any fund balance in the capital projects fund is projected to meet this goal. So next are board initiatives. The two current board initiatives to be funded in this budget are air service and special events. Air service funding was established as part of the previous strategic plan and carried forward to this strategic plan to support airlift. And additional dedicated special event funding was established by the board in fiscal year 22. This year, we're proposing $750,000 for air service and $1 million in total for special event funding. And as part of today's discussion, we wanted to get the committee's direction on air service spending. So the original strategic plan during 2016 designated the air service fund to be spent on like, the direct support of new and expanded routes, primarily through mitigation agreements. There were some informal discussions earlier in the year about possibly using the air service fund for other activities, given that we haven't had those opportunities for new airlift brought to us in several years. So the marketing department is proposing that we spend air service on marketing activities like paid advertising. If the committee um, does recommend that we spend air service on marketing efforts, such as paid advertising, that would mean that we have less air service funding readily available should a new airlift opportunity come our way. So essentially we want the committee's direction and discussion on how they think we should proceed and what our recommendations the board should be. The paid media, I mean, technically could be put towards air service markets, correct? With that kind of message. Yeah, so, so, so here's what's happened in this year. And let, let, let's just dial back for a second. We had a million dollars that we went into the fiscal year with. And the board, uh, not through a formal vote, but through direction and goals and everything else around that then can help illustrate, basically said, go spend that money. We've been sitting on 2018. And there was a real, a, a three-pronged approach that we took to spending that money. First one was to uh, ensure uh, routes and to help provide support for routes like JetBlue going to New York. Uh, the second one was was on education. The third was on opportunities. And so from that, we've we've actually taken that fund this year of a million dollars, and we have been spending. We'll, we're estimating that we're going to spend about seven hundred fifty thousand dollars of that a million dollars that was allocated this year. Going into next year, since we haven't had any MRTs come up since eighteen, I think JetBlue in eighteen was the last version. We're talking about replenishing that and making that at about seven fifty with guidance and discussion from the finance committee moving into the next budget. When, when, you, say, when you say education, what for? So I'll, I'll give you an example. Last week we had um, a trip that the airport um, invited 90 different folks from the different airlines to come in, experience the destination, education, talk about the importance. And I actually wound up doing about an hour presentation to this group, which included both locals and visitors about the importance of long haul. We used information from the cab to help talk about direct flights that are needed. And so that's education to decision makers from these airlines about where to put the routes and what we need moving forward. So that is one example from an education standpoint that we want to make sure that we are interacting with the decision makers um, and, and using the funds to uh, hopefully help influence future routes. You know, I'll jump in and I know uh, both Rick and Charlene probably know more about their service than I do, but I, I, I do want to just tee up because it was a heavy lift getting this fund uh, legislatively approved. You know, I think we're all huge proponents of air service and what we can do to bring in new routes. But on the flip side, I do, I also feel post pandemic, it's been a challenge. I mean, you can tell we've really, I don't want to say, I think the whole industry, I think the whole airline industry is in a different place. I feel like efforts, and I don't want to misspeak with groups like RASP, which we're also a member of is the pepper mill in the RCA, but I don't want to say we've stalled, but I think there's a real wait and see where this is all going. Um, I I don't have so much heartburn on taking it to the 750. I think there's a much bigger discussion from the RCDA on what just exactly, and, and you know, I think there's got to be <clears throat> representation with the airport to say, well, how, how do we, we've got this arsenal, um, how would we effectively go? And I, and I know you're dealing with Aaron as well, but I I, um, I don't have so much of a problem with the 750. I, I would like kind of an asterisk to say, look, if, if we really came together with a comprehensive plan, uh, whether it's a JetBlue or 
you know, obviously we come back to the board. Could we find additional dollars to that? But um, this air service fund, while well, we got it created, it hasn't been the smoothest in how we allocate it and implement it either. So I don't know um, any thoughts from other board members or Andy. I know you're on the RAS side too. Um, yeah, and can can I just get a clarification question? Um, the this fund it was is it generated by a surcharge? Uh, like a two dollar surcharge, or is it just was it? And because you mentioned Stephen, legislative process that created the fund, but it, it, it's just general fund money. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm going to let Ant or uh, Ben address this as well. Sure. So I'll, I'll give you a little bit of the history, just so everybody's on the same page. So back in I believe it was 2015, uh, the legislature created that surcharge. And as part of that legislation, it said that the RSCBA could spend the surcharge, among other things, uh, for any purpose identified in the strategic plan. And at that time, the RSCBA was uh, actively funding some uh, risk mitigation agreements with airlines. And so it was a uh, it was a need at the time that was evident. And so the board created this air service fund as part of the strategic plan to be able to use those surcharge funds to, to fund these risk mitigation agreements. And back when that original strategic plan was created, uh, the intent was clearly that that money was to, to go to airlines to support new and expanded routes through RASC, through these mitigation agreements. Uh, as Charles said, the last time that an opportunity was presented to the RCBA was 2018. Uh, so this money's just been sitting in that air service fund ever since. Um, there, there have been some discussions at, at, at various board meetings, and I'll, I'll think, you know, Lisa went back and pulled minutes and transcripts, and I've, I've reviewed them, and the, the sort of the issue I have, and the reason I wanted to highlight this and bring it to finance and ultimately to the board, is through Charles's goals, uh, through the 2023 business plan, the board sort of implies that these this air service funding can be used for things other than these mitigation agreements. But we've never really taken action and said, yes, you can use this for uh, air service marketing or sort of ancillary uses. So the, the goal here today is to, to determine from the from this committee, can these air service funds be used for marketing purposes surrounding air service? And if so, sort of what amount do you want to fund next year? Do we want to put more parameters around that spend? And if not, then the, the, the money that I think Charles and his team reasonably thought was, was permitted to be used for air service marketing, we just need to be reallocated to marketing and the air service fund would be restored to, uh, to that budgeted amount. Okay, thank you. And if, if I can just uh, see a couple things. So we just had a, uh, a RASC executive committee retreat with the airport senior team, I think it was just last week. And so we went through a, a lot of conversation and got a nice sheet here that I won't bore you with, but it really talked about where are the opportunities, what's happening in the next couple of, uh, of, of years from a from a uh, infrastructure standpoint with the different airlines and things like that. I think there's a there's a pretty uh, you know I think uh, agreed upon uh scenario that says you know we're really in a right now in the short term medium to short term in a strategy of maintenance that there isn't a lot of opportunity based on um uh infrastructure uh airline uh cap you know the capital that's bringing in new new uh airlines and and are sorry new air airplanes and then where we think those, those might be able to be implemented you know so i think Having a an ability, so I'm going to talk through. I think both sides of my mouth here a little bit because I, I I like the idea of protecting the air service fund for risk mitigation. Um, the question, as we are, are talking about, how much opportunity will there be for that? And I think there will be some. Yeah, I think the opportunity is going to lie, uh, uh, lie around the ultra low cost, the ULLC. I think they call those. Um, you know, and that's going to be the spirits. Uh, let's see, the uh, Avalo, the Breeze is a new one. It's kind of the aha type uh, opportunity. Um, you know, with a, a similar footprint that aha had. So, 
but I think we also had to have uh, some funds available, uh, not only through RSCBA, but RASC as well, when we're having that conversation, is really a maintenance strategy. You know, how do we make sure we maintain what we have, take smaller aircraft and try to get them to switch them out to larger aircraft, and then to add additional days if it's not if it's not quite daily service. So to me, it, it's it's a blend of this, but I think having some type of uh, of a, of a of a requirement, let's call it, to hold some of these dollars for risk mitigation will be important. Um, again, there could be other monies that we can go and, and go after, but you know maybe we want to keep a half a million dollars in a traditional risk mitigation opportunity, and then use other funds up to a certain amount to support the air service because we are definitely going to be uh, talking about that and needing that. So that's just a little bit from our meeting last week. So Andy, thanks for that. And, and, and just to recap, you know, the, the, the board members, and I remember Mr. Burdock saying, go spend that money. We've been sitting on that money. We wanted to put that in a play, which we've done. My suggestion was we come back with 750 into the fund for next year. And if the board wants to go back to a million, uh, in order to keep the marketing spend flat, which I think, Courtney, will correct me if I'm wrong, we're at 5.3 or 5.4 million in the marketing. We're flat and slightly over, actually. So, so we want to make sure that we were as flat as possible. If we went, took this back to a million now, the marketing spend would be a little bit lower than a year ago. My suggestion is we go at 750 and we use an, the first augmentation to make that a priority to take it back to a million if and when the board decides, hey, this is important that we want to hold on to that and use this as a one-time year spend only in this budget and then keep that as a risk mitigation at the million dollar level moving forward when we go to the augmentation process. That was my thought in order to keep the marketing spend flat. Yeah, thank you, Charles. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first of all, we had a fight to get that through with Nat, who legislatively, you remember that, that was a hell of a doubt. I don't, I hope we stay in compliance with what we were told the legislature we do. Um, does, doesn't the fund start over every year? It does. So we um, consider those as part of our carry forward resources. So if we didn't spend any of what was budgeted in the prior year, then we're essentially carrying that forward and budgeting it into the next so year. So it's budgeted every time. So right. You just sit on yeah. it and just roll over. Um, next question is, you've, uh, yeah, I, I would I would hate to, to, to take any money away because air, air service is so volatile, especially in this market, these airlines will pull out. Um, you know, there was a big battle over that runway because of, uh, they could, and then that just gave some of these airlines reasons to pull flights more than they needed. You know, they give them an excuse. So I just hope we, as long as we can get access up to a million dollars, I have no problem how you, it's all just pass throughs wherever you're doing with this money. Um, but I think it's going to be important to fight for air service coming out, of it, and we're going to go into possible recession. It's he who has bullets in the gun to fire to help keep our air service strong. So that's I just want to make sure we're this doesn't get you know the two fifty doesn't go away and then we can't get it back. You know, no, no, no. no and I do think just as I'm making a point of. For the next augmentation, I just want to make sure we communicate that to the board that this is probably going to be a request we come back to keep that whole. Mm -hmm. um, we do what? What level do we fund? Because outside of this, we fund RASC, right? We're the main. Two we, we 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 fund two hundred fifty thousand dollars to RASC additionally every year as well. So outside of this, correct? Uh, outside I of mean, separate from it. Yep. And then we fund it's the, all of us, even right. Yeah, well, the RCBA has been the biggest funder of RAS. Yes. Historically. How much how much does RAS have for the um I will for for you know trying to get new routes for the uh <clears throat> what do you guys call that risk mitigation? And I like what Andy talked about risk mitigation to keep that, you know, and maintenance. Really it's maintenance a lot of times of um you know. So that the airlines can keep operating here, uh, that little bit of incentive, which is the whole point of RASC and these kind of funds, is to keep them here when they will go elsewhere. And it's always historically, I mean, full flights, and then they're like, well, it shows no no percentage improvement. 
And they're like, well, we can't approve if it's 100% load every single day. And, and that goes back a long, long time. So really, uh, with the airlines right now, uh, the equipment itself and the challenges there, uh, labor. pilots, flight attendants, labor across the board, um, really the, the fares, if you look at fares, even Southwest, I mean, those aren't cheap fares anymore, people, but people, yeah. the demand for travel is still amazingly high. So critically important to get it here, to keep it here, but on the RASC side, how much is funded or have they, has RASC funded in a while or are you kind of where we are? The money's been sitting here, but there hasn't been an opportunity because we don't have JetBlue or someone coming in. I mean, what is the fund there? What kind of money and has it been funded in re recently? You know, and Andy, you may have a good idea. I thought we were somewhere 750, 800,000 range last year. Yeah, so annually, because we asked that question last week, annually we have about 850,000 of, of kind of member contributions. Uh, right now, the budget's sitting at about 1.2 million because there's some carryover that we have there. Um, but, you know, RASC is not, you know, they don't have to, we don't have to dedicate those funds just to risk mitigation. We have. Uh, and again, going back to the conversation that we had last week, it's really looking at uh, strategies uh, on a maintenance standpoint to make sure we're maintaining the service that we have and, you know, working with the airlines to then fill those seats. But when you look at the load factors on, on much of the flights that are coming in, load factors are 90% and up. So there's very little availability to move. That's why the conversation with the airline partners are, how do we upgauge? How do you, you know, they're retiring a lot of the Q400s. And so how do you go from the 75 pack to maybe 130 to 150, 189, whatever it might be, and start bringing in more seats. So we actually have less flights than the, than uh, in prior years, but we have more seats because the 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 uh, air airplane is has more seats, and so that's kind of that conversation of how Rask is going to approach that as well. Andy, and to your point, I mean, you know, the, the the load factor. We lost a daily route when we were running. 93% occupancy and the airlines pulled it out. So it's not a matter of occupancy in some cases, it's how they're going to revenue manage as, as, as much as they can. Additionally, my understanding, and Andy, correct me if I'm wrong, that RASC had put some money into um, outbound flights and marketing and certain programs while we have complemented them and spent money on inbound flights with outbound, outbound markets. So we haven't been overlapping, but we've been Kind of tiering how that approach has been in order to be most effective. Yeah, RASC has uh, recently, I would say relatively new over the last maybe two years, has spent a small amount of the budget, what we, I would call the catchment basin here okay. in the region to you know help with the efforts that the airport is doing to you know push the air service outbound from Reno to destinations beyond. So for the first time, the, the RAS board had agreed to kind of spend money in that fashion. Uh, again, small amount. I think it's only about $100,000, $150,000 that we were doing in that regards. And I, just to piggyback on Andy's comment, I think the thought process from RAS was, it's the overall health of the airline, right? It's, it's this, I know at one time we would never have spent on local market going out, but I think to assure that health of that route, there's a component there where we wanted to support outbound going. But you no, know, I just, I, I think one of the challenge, and again, I, I think if anybody said the answer, we would do it, but, um, you know, we're seeing, we're seeing strategic moves from the airlines that are affecting our efforts. You know, they're, this, they're going much more to their major hubs, this one-off, Going direct to a new market, Charlotte, things like the efficiencies aren't they're, they're just not now. Will it come back? It might down the road, it will be there. But I think for right now, things like the upgaging discussion, I mean, if a route's a, a high load factor, can we get them to consider a larger you know, route? I mean, it's going to be much more selective, I think, opportunities. And I don't want to sound like I know air service, I just think we're in a very interesting. I going back to the budget piece, um. I'm 
I'm okay with the 750 if we can asterisk it saying, look, we may be back on the augmentation with an opportunity. I also think, and I appreciate Charles' position where as much as the board were saying spend this, that you don't just spend it. I want to burn it. Yeah. Um, I'm also very open to getting creative on how would we set something up? You know, Southern California is a great example. We have four or five airports. We that's probably our number one market with direct service. I think Vegas might be number one, but um, you know, how do we get creative? And honestly, I think we need to really have a heart to heart sit down with Rask on how do we coordinate these efforts um, that much more too, and the airport. And, and if I could just, I think I just mentioned just so that we're all on the same page here. If you know. If we were, if you decided as a subcommittee to say take that 750 and take it back to a million and just go back to that, we would we would pull that out of the marketing budget right now in order to balance the budget. So we would be a, a little bit down from from the 750 going back to a million. But please note that in the special event funding, we've also increased that dollar from 500,000 annually to now a million. So half of that going to the opportunity fund and half and half that going to the annual. Um, the annual 500,000 special events fund, which is will come before the board in May as well. So I do want to clarify a little bit. What Charles was talking about is in fiscal year 23. Right now we have about 300,000 in marketing expenditures that could be moved to the air service fund because they were spent on air service related efforts. So that's what he's talking about fiscal 23. And fiscal 24, we have not budgeted to spend any of this course. Right. Because we would need the committee's direction. Thank you. Right. Steve, a couple things. Just, um, I guess, Charles and have. It seems like we, you know, it'd be nice to get a, a summit of the airport and RASC and the RCDA together and just really understand what the next two years are going to need for air service. I mean, we kind of know um, my company, and I know Stephen does it too, we fly charters a lot. So we kind of take care of our own destiny because you can't get people here. I mean, it's the it's our number one Achilles heel is, is air service, I think, for our whole community. But, uh, you know, I think RASC has that money. We, we, you know, I like use it, lose it, or I don't want to spend it if it's the right spend. Um, I think what you did, just moving it on air service, if, as long as the word air service is in there and it was directed, I don't think that's an issue. Nobody's going to even question you're doing what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Um, it seems like, uh, like I said, Rask, um, in talking to Carl, and we, we talked about this, and I know Andy heard this, he's, he mentioned it, it's, and Stephen knows this, it's, it's a hub world right now. It's not, the, the days of the uh, Atlanta arena, you can't, they don't work. It, 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 the airlines can take those toys somewhere else, and so it's a really a hub. And Reno, you know, I know, uh, as a Carl has been working on kind of an attack plan for hubs and service to for us to look at that because I think that's that's what you got to live with for now. Because that's where all their assets are. They're not going to be one off to Reno. It sounds like you and Stephen are both on the same page to say we, we probably need to do a strategic plan with the airport uh, think that, for more long term effectiveness. Yeah and I think you guys, you know, we're sitting here, we're you guys are not only pumping money into ask. The properties are pumping money into RASP, we're paying room tax. We're all pumping a lot of money here. Like to really see us get after it. I know that the airport probably has a great development team, but it'd be nice to get updates and 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 or maybe you know not just come to the board for three minutes. I think yeah. right. you yeah. know have a working session. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I, I like I like that Rick because <clears throat> at the end of the day, the airport RASP and and our CBA working in with the airlines themselves. Um, it's a crystal ball that having been 42 years in the industry, I can tell you it is usually pretty cloudy. I mean, I can't even tell you between jet fuel crisis and 9-11 and COVID and so many things. It's like a roller coaster you ride on um, how the airlines operate. But obviously right now the challenges on the equipment Reno's never going to be big enough to be a hub. We will never be considered a hub. We are a, maybe a spoke that people, you know, that that equipment, when that airplane comes in from Dallas, that I flew in the other afternoon and lands here at two o'clock, um, it's turning right back around and you've got a crew 
that's been overnight that takes that back out. The airplanes themselves and the crews don't, they can't afford for them to sit really anywhere. Those airplanes never stop. You know, they get back to Dallas, they do a red eye somewhere. So the equipment has got to be utilized to the maximum. Um, and so really a lot of what the airlines as they do their planning uh, is, is considering that, you know, slots, um, you know, your, um, you know, what your time slots are for takeoffs and landings at different airports and how can they most efficiently with labor shortages, with equipment shortages, make use of that airplane and the crew that you have well, in, in good weather, don't even put weather into it. So it's really, they're, they're coming through here. It's rare, except for the early morning flights, those aircraft will come in late at night. But that 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 airplane, you know, so working, I don't have an answer to that, but it's fluid and whatever we can do to, especially tra you know, travel, we've looked at the challenges. Southern California has improved dramatically. The Bay Area is still, you know, we keep losing the Bay Area. Yeah, my son lives down there. They wanted to fly up this weekend. And, and you can't, a nonstop service to the Bay Area for your customers, for, you know, business people, for locals trying to go to the Bay Area for something. We've got a huge gap there. So I don't, you know, as much as we together, but I love the idea, how, how do we kind of brainstorm with all the, the, the players that are part of it to guess the best we can and, and promote the best we can of working with, you know, with the airlines and with RASC and the airport and us, to, which is the whole purpose of why RASC was formed too, was to do that to give incentives so that we can maintain. And I love what, Andy, you're absolutely right, maintain what we have, but um, be realistic too of what, you know, what is possible. You're looking at, you know, you're looking at a new convention center up in Tahoe. They're going to be a lot. They're now going to be able to sell in all seasons. They've never been able to because they haven't had a convention center. Now they've got one. That's going to only help the airlines. More people will fly to, to go to, say, you know, to go up in Tahoe. So you're going to see more demand as soon as that center, that convention center is done. Um, I know Andy's probably well aware of it because he's up there. But the point is that this is probably a perfect time for us. To, get serious about what are we going to do with their service. And then you saw the day President Biden came out, they're going to do a bill of rights. Did you see that? They're going to make the airlines cover costs of rooms and food and the whole deal. Well, that won't help us. No. no. At all. I'm just saying it's going to hurt. You know? Oh, yeah. It's, wow. So it's time for help. Yeah. Real quick. And Andy, I don't know if you have anything you want to add. Yeah, just a, a couple things. So um, Christina, what Ernie was at the uh, that we'll call it a summit retreat uh, last week. So she was engaged in that conversation, uh, and I think having uh, you know a broader discussion is probably good. I did have one question. Um, I, th I think I heard that there was three hundred thousand some odd dollars that were used for air service marketing that could be shifted over. Just a question on that. I don't know if it could be answered today, but did that was the, the message within that creative? Was it specific to air service, or was it just specific to that particular market for travel to the Reno Tahoe area? Because I think going back to what Rick was saying, that you know, just to make sure that we are crossing our T's and dotting our I's correctly, I would assume that those messages were very specific to you know the, supporting the air. Oh, excuse me. Uh, airlift out of that market. It was very specific, Andy. Okay. And then the other, the only other thing I was going to throw out there, Stephen, um, is there are two potential um, opportunities that I know the airport air service team is is looking at. One is uh, Hawaii and uh, opportunities out of there, and the other is out of Canada. So uh, when we were on the Travel Nevada Canadian mission that I attended, we were in Edmonton. And we had a meeting with the Edmonton Airport, and they are talking with a provider in Edmonton, Reno, uh, direct. And I know that the air service team uh, has reached out and are talking with the Edmonton Airport as well. So there is some opportunity bubbling out there that could potentially uh, come back around for an ask uh, for this type of uh, funding support. Thank Thanks, you. Andy. You know, one, one thing, just to bring it back to Courtney's presentation. So... 
Why don't we touch on the special event funding? I know we have member, we took that from 500,000 to a million. Um, again, I don't think we're necessarily going with the direction of like just spend it to spend it. Right. It's you've got your parameters in place on that initial 500. I know we have the opportunity fund. I think, I don't know if that's for the second 500. It is, yes. Um, you know, and I'm not, I'm just looking at it as a whole that we could also massage that and move it there. So, you know, right. if one doesn't come to fruition, that might be an area that you shift over, right? Well, Absolutely, because these are both under board directives. Yeah. yeah, and the proposal would take us to the the opportunity fund to a million. So 500 from this year, 500 from next year. So we would have a million to make in the opportunity fund. And then we just met um, a couple of days ago internally regarding the special events. 500,000 with the main fund, and that will be a board agenda item at the end of May to present um, to go over who we recommend funding. I guess my point being is we could approve this as is, knowing that we'll come back you know, and you can massage it. Massage it around. Yeah. You need to move full 250 over from special event to some, or vice versa. I mean, if we had the right opportunity come up, we may allocate that special event fund uh, and take care of it. There. So it's only a David. Yeah, and we because we didn't spend the five hundred on the opportunity fund this year. So the board, it's a carry. It could be a carry forward, but the million right now doesn't show that carry forward. Correct? So essentially, um, you um, actually in twenty two, um, the board directed that we keep an additional five hundred thousand on hand at all times in that opportunity fund. So you're correct that we aren't planning to spend it this year, and we included it in our carry forward resources. But the direction we've been given is to have that 500,000 available annually, in addition to the 500 that is through our application. So, a million. And so, it's the same scenario as the money you just allocated every year. It doesn't roll over and compound, right? It just sits. Right. So, right. Yeah. And that, like you said, that we really have, to, we've done a great job of, of helping the existing events now. Now, with that 500 sitting here, we probably need a just like the, get with the airport and discuss the future. Let's get maybe there is some opportunities we should get the special event group to think about future events. That you know, for instance, the track could be a future event, or the um, I'm just saying something new. The the new what's the new hot August nights? Is it a Tesla parade, electric show, all electric cars? What is it? You know, something anyway. Enough. Okay. Yes. So I, I think one thing I'd like to see, just so staff has clarity, and, and I do as well. Uh, twenty three, twenty four Air Service Fund is this the Finance Committee's recommendation that that be funded, and that that money not be used for anything other than direct support of airlift group mitigation agreements, or can it be? Spent marketing is at staff's dis discretion. Do you want any? Air fund marketing funds spend to come back to the board. I personally, and again, this is just my take. I I would like to tie it to something broader than just mitigation. Yeah, me too. I I, I mean, it, to me, it would be it, mitigation would definitely be an option, and that you know. But I look at it as um, the support of air service in general. It, it could be it could be an upgaging project where if if Alaska would go to a bigger plane out of Seattle. We would, you know, it may not be a mini, it may be marketing efforts. So it's only marketing support new routes. I think, and, you know, and, and don't, don't, don't dismiss the education part because you're going to have new people walking in there. We've got to continue to tell our story yeah. to the core group in that district. I, I also don't think tying specifically just to new routes is what I think we may be supporting yeah. existing sure. markets. Um, but kind of, so yes to it all, right? Anything that's going to, you know, I go back to the most basic of, metrics and it is seats into the market. I mean, at the end of the day, as much as I love having a new market, at the end of the day, if we're bringing in 5% more seats than year prior, it means we're bringing in more bodies. I, you know, I won't get so stuck in the minutia that we haven't developed a new, now ultimately it'd be great to be opening up a new, new pipeline, but if we're getting more seats into the market, more bodies on the plane, I'm more worried about that. So Ben, um, the way this is written up here, do you need us, if, if we all, in a sense, have an, an agreement to air, for airlift, for air service related marketing, do you need our input that'll go to the board that the fourth bullet down? 
uh, what percentage could be allocated to marketing and what should be reserved for maintenance and risk mitigation? Sure. So I think it's just whatever your recommendation is to the board, right? And, you know, to be clear, we can take this to the board and the rest of the board can say, no, we want that money only for, for risk mitigation, right? So we're just making a recommendation today. But it, do we have to, do you want, are you asking us to break it out of what percentage might be marketing? That was just a recommendation because what we wanted to avoid was um, going through the year and spending all of that money on paid media and then having the board come to us and say, hey, we want to spend 750 on this mitigation opportunity now. So we wanted some direction on pacing or percentage right. or just, just kind of thought. I mean, I think in principle, how you have it laid out saying that we are open as a finance committee to say that air service fund can be, take the shackles off a little bit. It's not, it doesn't have to be specifically for mitigation. It can be used for marketing. And, and, and also, when, when, when the board came to me and said, go spend that money this year, it was, we haven't been using it. Let's put it into play responsibly to help support that through the marketing and through the education, which we're not going to spend all of it by any means. Right. And I think I think we're all saying the same thing that. I think, I think Stephen's point is well taken that you, to your, what you just said, Ben, I think it's got to be, can't be just the word mitigation. It's got to be. All air service opportunities. Support there is support, support. Yeah. advertising, education, education. Right. Andy, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Were you trying to come in? Yeah, I just the only thing that I would be cautious of is you know, we we want to preserve, I, I think we want to preserve some of this for risk mitigation. Because if we go and spend it all on marketing and then there's an opportunity, I could see a situation where it's like, hey, we've kind of we've drained the, uh, the well, so to speak. Not that there aren't other dollars that could shift around because we know that that could work. But um, I, I, we, I think we just got to be clear. We are keeping mitigation within the set of opportunities so that That's if that opportunity comes up, we do have those funds available. We haven't spent it all on, quote, unquote, marketing or education, whatever else you want to call it. So in the marketing, you know, it would help if we were a little more specific than all in, I agree with what Andy's saying. So we're not going to keep the 750 that could all go to marketing. Do we want to kind of designate a percentage of that? Because that's going to help marketing's budget, right? How does marketing know what they're going to be been, be? But in their budget, if we are unclear of kind of the target of what we want to have possible use of or budget, would you budget if we decided X amount, say 300 or 350, you would move that into, it would be under their service, but designated for marketing Absolutely. into the whole marketing budget. Just Absolutely. So yeah, marketing would come up with a plan to spend the 350 for the year and they know that that was their maximum. And that has to be specifically for airline related activities. We're not going to put it for digital advertising Correct. to come for you know special events. It's always going to be segmented towards yeah. airline support. Yeah. That's the thing at the point, I think it's worth just, again, making is that that marketing, when we're saying it's going to shift to marketing, I'm not looking at it going into the general market. I'm looking at it, that it's yeah. like, it's it might be a digital that's campaign, that's campaign that's with, yeah. with, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, to, to ensure routes right. to do those things. Right. It's airline specific. Right. Airline specific. Right. It just takes, it just gives you some flexibility. Right. That, yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Totally. So in the so sake of a motion, and because I think a lot of this is going to come back to the discussion. Yeah, they're going to they're going to come right. Over. All the board members won't figure it out. Like we just talk it through. They're going to say we'll, we'll need to we'll talk it through. Yeah. So, so I think at the end we'll have a motion to sort of approve the budget as presented and discussed, and then in Courtney's presentation to the full board, she can incorporate this discussion into that recommendation. So I don't think we have to take okay separate action on it. And Courtney, you have everything you need. Going um, forward and then for the, the 300 reallocating, I'm not sure. Maybe we... Yeah, I do want to touch on that a little more. So um, this not only impacts the fiscal 24 budget, but also fiscal 23 spending. So year to date, marketing spent about $300,000 on air service related marketing. That could be moved as an expenditure from the air service fund and presented to the board as such. 
Um, and if we authorize marketing to start spending air service funding on like paid media, they anticipate they could spend about 600000 through the end of the fiscal year. So we just wanted some input from the board as to do we want to kick that off in this year? Is it something that we're just looking for fiscal point four? And is that paid media paid tied media. to air service? It's, 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 it's all tied to air service. It, when you say paid media, that'll scare that board. It, right. It'll scare them. The marketing, the marketing is all tied to support specifically on airlines. That's all. Yeah. Thank you. And I think as long as we communicate that, that would be great. Okay, so we're okay with marketing spending up to 600000 in the current fiscal year on, on paid media related to air service. I ain't aware of that. Okay. As long as it's air, you don't even have to say related, just say it's paid media for air service. Okay. Yeah. And that's for this fiscal year, right. not next year. Correct. Yeah. Next year, we'll, we'll leave that as more of an open discussion of the board to figure out what. What percentage of the budget that they want marketing to spend versus mm -hmm. what way they want us to hold back for mitigation opportunities? Um, for this year, out of our million dollar budget in air service, we would spend six hundred thousand on paid media and retain four hundred thousand to carry forward. Okay. So that paid media will be placed now in this Correct. budget, but it, it may run into the fall or it doesn't depending on the timing. Yeah, so it crosses yes. us, but. Yeah. I think, we're, I think we're good to move forward. Um, we'll summarize this discussion and we'll present it when we present the budget forward. All right, so we'll go ahead and move on to the general fund revenues and resources, which is how the budget is funded. So this is the composition of general fund revenues and resources for the budget year for the current year. The largest portion of our revenues is the tax, which consists of collections and the tourism surcharge. Next are facilities revenues, and the next highest component is carry out and balance, which is essentially amounts that we budgeted in this current fiscal year and like we won't be spending, such as the 500000 in the board designated special event opportunity funding. This also consists of Q4 revenues that will likely exceed budget, and carry forward amounts are always a component of our budget and are $3.9 in total this year. One, are the revenues are $1.3 million and consist of certain administrative fees and smaller revenues generated by the departments. So here we have a comparison to pre-pandemic. In total, revenues and resources for fiscal year 24 are $56.4 million compared to $53.1 million pre-pandemic. And we'll go into those revenue estimates in more detail next. So first, we'll look at our budget for room tax revenues. Room tax revenues were estimated using trend analysis over average daily room rates, collections and prior periods, market segment trends, and other economic considerations. We prepared and reviewed different scenarios and ultimately decided to be slightly conservative. Like I mentioned in the budget book, there are still trends we're keeping an eye on at the local and national level that we think could lead to these slight decreases in room tax revenues. And if we find that room tax revenues are coming in under budget, Internally, we readjust our budget and react quickly. If revenues come in over budget, we review that with the finance committee and could request an augmentation to spend those revenues. So we're still in uncertain times and we're really just placing an emphasis on really closely monitoring performance and trends. Here we have historical RCBA room tax revenues. Again, for, we're looking at two consecutive years, fiscal 22 and fiscal 23, where revenues have exceeded pre-pandemic and we continue this we expect this to continue for the fiscal 24 budget. Here we have certain room tax statistics. Our increases in room tax revenues have been heavily driven by the average daily room rates. Year to date, EDR is about 26% higher than pre pandemic. Occupancy percentages, however, are lower than pre pandemic, as are occupied rooms. You'll see with our budget, we took a moderate approach and we did budget for a slight decrease in ADR as we continue to monitor and figure out what the new normal looks like for those rates. So here's a breakdown of total taxable room revenues by market segment. We have seen a slight shift in trends, most notably with vacation rentals. So pre-pandemic vacation rentals were about 5% of total taxable room revenues. Last year, they were 9% of the total, and year to date, they're about 10%. So we have occupied rooms by market segment. Um, we have decreases in our budget in most segments, um, except for vacation rentals, which is again based on trends. I mean, what, where did the, um, the Marriott's of the world go with their room tax? And 
What is, are they under a hotel? They're under a hotel, yeah. yeah. I can move them over. I can send you our list after two that breaks down who's in which category. Yeah, would you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Actually, we'll just pause for a second uh, and don't mean it. Side trip. Is where are we getting inventory wise pre pandemic? Are we pretty comparable? We are down due to some closures, especially like in the hotel segment, and there's definitely some rooms that are down compared to hotels too. Air. When did Harris go offline? Was it they like ninth in the pandemic, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was in the pandemic. They were they were shut down. Yeah, they could, yeah. By the time I thought they were shut down. Okay. Sorry, Corey. Oh, no, you're good. You can interrupt it. Um, so we do have occupied rooms here. Um, so we just went over that. Let's go back to average rates. Um, we did budget for slight or slightly declining or flat average daily rates based on our trend analysis and other economic factors. So here we have a comparison of facilities revenues by facility and category. And this is in the budget book on page nine. For facility rental revenues, we used estimates prepared by the sales department and concessions and catering estimates were prepared by Airmark. These estimates were based on actual events booked at the time that the budget was prepared. So in total, our revenues are looking at about $7.2 million for fiscal year 24. Um, and also that other revenues category consists of parking revenues, AV charges, internet charges, and other services. And we budgeted those based on the trends that we're seeing in the current fiscal year in relation to events. Can, you, can I ask a question? Do you put the, when you take all the lineage for the bowling stadium, where does that go? Lineage is in the um, NBS revenues. It goes into the revenues of the NBS. Yes. Okay. Fair. So we'll talk about facilities expenses later in the presentation, but I wanted to give the committee an overview of our loss projections compared to prior years, um, and this is on page 10 of your budget book too. We're budgeting for a 4% decrease in the total facilities loss figure compared to the prior year, which is still challenging to budget for given the large increases we're seeing in utilities, temporary labor, and overall inflation, which has increased over 19% since pre-pandemic. Um, we'll talk about this more when we go into detail about the facilities expenses, um, but there are definitely factors working against us in calculating these losses. So next are our additional revenues and resources. Again, other revenues are um, certain administrative fees, smaller revenues generated by the departments. This year, other revenues include the amounts paid to the RSCBA by hotels in relation to the USBC Women's Championship. And carry forward fund balance, again, are those amounts that we don't anticipate will spend in fiscal year 23, and any revenues that we anticipate will come in over budget in Q4. This is, this is where we write the check for the bowlers in the stadium. Yeah, so um, in the sales budget, the site fees are reflected in their budget, and then the money that we get back from the hotels is in this other revenues bucket. We've covered revenues in a lot of detail, so now we're going to move on to general fund expenses. So here we have an overview of general fund expenses by department and by operating category. Marketing is the highest department, followed by facilities and then sales. Our largest category of spending is payroll and related costs, with promotion and advertising being our second highest category. And we'll go into a lot more detail regarding the spending by department category next. Here we have a breakdown of payroll and related expenses. Facilities are 40% of our total payroll and sales is 30%, which makes up the bulk of our payroll spending. Um, as a reminder, facilities staff are reflected as payroll expenses now. You, Where is, oh, sorry, yeah. I, I can't find it. Where are we? Yeah, absolutely. Let me find the thing on the book. You know, for the sake of the board meeting, though, I do think we want to have whatever is in the packet, if we could track yeah. it with whatever is on the screen. Page five. Number of pages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just so we're... Should it, um, what do you think the board? What so this is on... Straight down is on page 13. Page 13? Yes. <laughs> There's no, I guess it's not the pie chart. There's no pie chart right now. <laughs> so um, we'll talk a little bit more about 
some of the items that are in this year's payroll and related expenses budget. So one item that the CEO wanted to bring to the committee's attention is the proposed cost of living adjustment for all staff. For fiscal year 24, we're proposing a 4% cost of living adjustment. From the period of January 2019 for, to present, national average CPI inflation has been over 19%. We have given staff um, a total of 10% of COLAs during that time period. So overall, overall, our COLAs are trending below inflation. And we also compare, performed a comparison of our COLAs to other local governments and found that we're still below what other local governments are doing too. So we included a COLA within this budget and presented, but if the committee wants further discussion or wants us to mo modify the COLA, we can certainly do that. This is something I said that this, 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 this committee should make a decision on. Um, we've had, what, two COLA increases in the last year? We've, um, in the last, from January 19 to present, we've had three. We've, we've had three, but the, the real question is, does the committee want to support and endorse this moving forward? There is a 3% merit increase that has been budgeted for the next fiscal year. I'm sorry, how much? 3% merit? Up to 3% for qualifying staff. This, and the COLA would be in addition to, so instead of just putting it in, my, my comment was send it to the subcommittee and let them How debate. much is the COLA? So we budgeted for a 4% COLA. So it's seven. Okay. Um, next question is the 10% that we did was four different Bumps. It was over three different bumps. Yeah, the 10% um, was covering a period of time. All in a year, then? All in a year? Or? Um, over the last three fiscal years. Okay. Which is well cool. below what the city and the county were doing. What were those increments? Like, do you recall? So we had 4%, a 3%, and a 3%. 4%, 3%. Okay. I mean, I think it's a broader discussion. Obviously, yeah, you know, whether we move it forward to the recommend, I think highlighting it to the group that look, we're passing this forward, but we want full board discussion. Yeah. Um, I do think, and again, I'm not in that world of the public agencies. You know, you, I never really know. You can kind of cherry pick whatever argument you want to make, but well, Washoe's doing this, but the city of Sparks is doing, you know. Think we want to lay it all out what everybody's doing you know it might be a handy addendum for the group of what are the other jurisdictions doing absolutely we um, do have that information the only thing that's slightly different between us and like washington county or city of reno is that they have um some marketing units so we compare to what their unrepresented employees are doing yeah. just since, since we don't have the same marketing units um so we do have that information handy i'm, I'm to your point, I agree. I think we got to be clear on this so that you you just gave us some really good stuff. You might want to be able to give them a right a look you see just because they you know what I mean just for the red just so they're they will be debated. Yeah. Well, and what is the what is the dollar amount? I know the percent that's, are, that's that's important. The dollar amount. Thank yeah, we can pull out what the dollar amount okay. impact is. They Which probably the, both the merit and the colon. Or, yeah, and, and then and if you're going to show it, show the impact on the budget or the general fund or however how it is, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll pull out a dollar amount um, and include the comparison to unrepresented employees from Washoe yeah. County City of Reno that we performed, and, and just go from there and present it to the board. And you could put, like you you said, you could put your you could put what you've done or what you're proposing against what the state yeah. or what the city or the county's doing or however you want to okay. use your. Well, and then you've got a four four percent. Purse increase. So yes, all of us yeah. as government entities, it's costing the cities four percent more contribution into purse. That's a good point. Which the private sector does not get. That's so if we're looking at, at what we're providing for our employees, we're doing merit and we're doing a four percent cola is yeah behind inflation because none of us can keep ahead of it right now. Uh you add another four percent that costs the RCBA uh is is a raise too. You know, for those employees. And just for my own knowledge, when when we allocate up to three percent merit, so that means if you go through your reviews and that of people, it could be anywhere from zero, zero to three, right? Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, it's not just a standard. Got it. Self performance better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
So we'll, we'll take that for the presentation to the board. If there's no other questions on payroll and related costs, then we'll go ahead and move on to supplies and services. Andy, you know, I don't want to keep leaving you out there. Uh, no, I'm good. Anything. Thank you. I'll let you know. So next is services and supplies. The majority of this category is related to facilities expenses, which we've broken out further on the screen. For facilities, services and supplies have been really impacted by inflation and overall cost increases. We've said seen increases of 16 to 40 percent in our utility bills, and inflation has impacted every other category in that area. If we see cost increases that are on track with what we saw in the last fiscal year, this number for services and supplies may not be that realistic. It's something we're watching really closely, um, but if, if we keep seeing things increasing in the same manner, we might need to come to the board and change this figure. And also, um, with increased activity at the facilities, this number goes up. So if we do find that sales is booking more groups, more events, we'll need to increase this number um, for increased staffing, increased security services, things like that. So for the remainder of the category, we're anticipating increases in general liability insurance. We're still waiting to receive those final quotes. We've put in a good amount of work to mitigate some of those increases, such as implementing enhanced cybersecurity controls. Um, but the full, the full renewal itself is going to be brought to the board for approval once we receive all of our quotes and evaluate them. So we're still in that process, but we've budgeted for an increase. The remainder of this line item consists of supplies, contracted services, general liability insurance costs like we just talked about, dues and other services. So next is travel and entertainment. Travel and entertainment budgeted at 126% of the prior year and over, um, and it's also over pre-pandemic levels. 84% of this is related to the sales department. This line item has also been really impacted by inflation and the fluctuations that we see in airfare prices. For the remaining portion of travel and entertainment, you'll see small increases, which are to provide staff opportunities for networking and professional development. The next is promotions and advertising. This line item is budgeted at 113% of pre-pandemic levels with the majority of spending and marketing. So in marketing, we have $5.4 million budgeted in leisure media advice, which is consistent with prior spending levels. We have a million dollars in agency of record and media buying fees. There are increases here related to the anticipated new agency of record contract and new services provided in that contract. Again, this is where the 750 in air service is budgeted from. And we have a 71% increase in website and related costs. This is due to the new website, which was approved by the board at the last board meeting. Within this overall line item, we've also budgeted 150% for the, I'm sorry, 150,000 for the Reno Air Races Association, and that's contingent on the negotiation of the sponsorship agreement. The special projects is where we budget special event funding, event sponsorships, commitments, and related costs. So for fiscal 24, we've this line item used the site piece for the 2024 USBC Women's Championships. $250,000 from Miss USA, um, that million dollars in special event funding that we already talked about, and then the remaining million dollars is event commitments, sponsorships, and booking incentives within the sales department. Next is the apportionment. These are the amounts that we um, relate to Incline Village Crystal Bay based on national legislation, and these are based on our prediction and wash of the So next we'll talk about the RCA's other funds. The capital fund was discussed during the previous agenda item and approved separately. The insurance fund, um, this was covered during our discussion of payroll and related costs. But as you're aware, we have a separate fund that accounts for health insurance and workers' compensation activities. Fund balance in this fund is generally minimal. Some years we have a slight increase, some years we have a slight decrease. And these figures will change since they're based on estimates and we won't go through our health insurance renewal until later in the year. So lastly is the debt service fund. Transfers to this fund are budgeted at $8 million. And after principal and interest payments, outstanding debt will be as follows at June 30th, 2024. That's a great slide. Yes. And this is kudos to mm -hmm. staff and Charles and all of you. Just Courtney and Chisel, that yeah, uh, get over there with the, with the 
with rebalancing that, it's going to save us seven million dollars in the length of that uh, fund. What's our outstanding now? <clears throat> So outstanding, including principal and interest, at the end of the this budget, you're only 67 million. So it's 55 million in principal and other remaining interest. Mm -hmm. Wow. Just quite a bit yeah, of big, big time. Okay. That's great. The only time I remember another agency that had good numbers like this was the airport back in the day. And this is really impressive because the RCA is probably <laughs> pricey. Yeah, this is pretty good. Mm -hmm. With that, we'll open up for any questions. I've got one just here. How much are we going to lose in the facilities? Technically, six. What are you proposing? So we have 5.7 million budgeted in fiscal year 24 and about 5.9 million in losses for fiscal year 23. So we budgeted for a 4% decrease, and that's what we're going to work towards. And we thought, you know, when we moved to go in house, we thought, we used to lose like 3.5, didn't we, in the ourselves before pre. I can pull up that chart. I'm just asking. Yeah, so it's it's been it's varied from year to year, but let me pull up that chart that shows the trends real quick. From the best year, we were at 3.9. It went up to 6.3, 5.4. So it's it's gone up and down. Essentially, what we're hoping for year to year is to just have percentage decreases in that loss. A lot of things that are working against us are staff retention. You know, during the ASM contract, there was a lot of turnover. So right. hiring new employees, especially at what market rates have gone to in the last year, is it's difficult. Temporary labor is costing us a lot more than we anticipated. And what no one really expected were the huge increases in utility rates. Being seen 16 to 40 percent and increasing in those utility bills in just one year is is a big hit. So a lot of the losses we're seeing are just in the supply chain. It's Absolutely. Basically, right. I mean, we thought we were sharp by ASM being a middleman taking their their expenses out, but we're still just due to the economy we're running or to the city. Yeah. Yeah, and one, one thing that's really going to benefit is um, the increases in the revenues. I mean, for fiscal year 23, we have to 9 million in revenues, which would be record high revenues for facilities. So that's also what's driving up our costs because with more activity at the yeah. facilities, the expenses go up. Not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, having more control and being able to, to utilize those facilities in a more efficient manner is, is the amount you can't quantify in losses, which has been good. So, Courtney, is that why I'm looking at the bowling? Stadium with us having the tournament here, thinking, oh my gosh, we won't have as many losses because it's full and it's being utilized. But because we've got the operating expenses, it it's yeah. it, it's it pushes, very expensive it to staff the tournament. Um, Labor costs, utilities costs, security. Yeah. It's okay. very expensive. Labor, and, security, power, everything. Mm -hmm. that but at the end of the day, we've got heads and beds. We've got seats on airplanes. We've got, we got the economic impact. Got well, yeah, so the plus the revenue green. facilities itself are up higher than they've ever been. So I would think, yeah. you know, just a FYI, and the chair can just thoughts. You might want to highlight this for the that board when they get, you know, to that, because this is kind of interesting what we've done. And we're, we're, it's basically to tell the story that we are thriving a little bit yet, yeah, but due to supply chain and everything else, it's it's gone with the with the more more usage, everything, you know. So it's something that gives you guys a you know makes us look pretty good that we're we're doing the, the work. And yeah, so I do think put together a little more information about what events will look like year to year and yeah. just some of the more successful things that have happened. Well, and I think too we've talked about the impact of every event that comes is is rooms is airline seats the total economic impact of every. Group, the bowlers, the convention, the, the tournaments at a Golden Eagle, every event that comes here has an economic impact that goes far beyond that because they're eating out, they're shopping, they're buying gas. They're, so that full economic picture is, is, is bigger than our room nights and seats on airplanes. Yeah. Like when you bring in Safari Club, where you bring in the bowlers, you look at it. I think bowlers are 73 million. I got to move Safari Club when it's prime's a big number for all the everything that comes in. I mean, it's just such a big impact, but that's a great story because mm -hmm. we forget that it's like the airport. We're really a driver of not just our own budget, 
We're driving the whole community. The whole community okay. and all the businesses that are here. Yeah. All your local businesses that are selling things and keep leaving out, going out. Yeah, it's helping our business community okay. as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then, yeah, one thing to note in those 19 numbers is that did include intervention safari club. So that's why those losses dip a bit lower because we had very large revenues coming from those um, during fiscal 19. You know, I know this is a sidetrack and we brought it up last board meeting. I think it was on kind of touring facilities in general and trying to work for make sure that we're not out of bounds on open meeting. Uh, but I know brief discussion yesterday, Trent, but for all of us, including even city governments, and that to see the bowling stadium operate with a group in house is probably worth everybody's time. I don't know how we'd set it up. Even if you could do it, Three or four days to tours where we're not exceeding the allowed upon number, but to see it in action, I think you, it kind of connects the dots that what these facilities generate when they're when they're operating. So again, I don't know if that's worth this, you know, even on new business at the board meeting, but I yeah. think we're looking for more agenda items. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we are. Uh, you want to go more than four hours? <laughs> But I, I do think, even if it's just, I, I'm sure whether it's, you know, through staff, even if a board member could reach out and go, hey, I want to see an opening or an, a day in the life of the bowling stadium when it's active. Would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, in July would be great before, before it ends. Before it ends, yeah. 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 yeah, I think that'd be helpful to board members, too. Yep, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I've noted. Anything else? Courtney? Um, nothing else. Um, if the board doesn't have any additional questions, then we would just, or if the committee doesn't have additional questions, we would move to approve the budget as presented um, and make those modifications to the presentation we talked about. So, highlighting some of the successes for the facilities, the discussion about air service. I think air service, the COLAs, you know, there's some things that I'm okay with approving this to pass along more for, again, as advisory. <laughs> And and move to discussion of the full board. Um, I'd be open for a motion. Ben, I I uh, just one thing, and I think I might have glossed over the end of the discussion. Does this committee want to make a an objective recommendation on the air service fund and marketing, as in fifty percent of it, seventy five percent of it, or do you just want to kick that to the board for a? It'll be a hot discussion at the board meeting. It'll be a hot. Yeah. Yeah. So the, if you want to make a recommendation, you can. If not, you can. You know, I don't answer. mind putting a number to it. I, I honestly, I almost prefer deferring a bit to staff to say what would the, the mix be that you'd recommend. Okay. But I, <clears throat> I think the bigger thing is, uh, you know, I, I think this is much more to, to put to a general discussion for the full board. I'm definitely in favor of not tying it just to a mitigation. But even going forward, I don't. I mean, I guess for the record, we could set a number and we could always come back for approval to stray, but we can have staff to come up with one. Right. Done, then okay. we can make recommendation. I think that's sort of your options there. Is you, that, you look at the, you got RASC funding, you've got this funding, you've got, to your point, Stephen, you're just, it's just there for any kind of funding, air service. Right. right. You know, Christina just pointed out to me via text that also the, you know, funding, uh, the proposed funding and the spend was also to go to an air service consultant that's going to help us be more effective moving forward. So again, very air service specific in terms of that spend, not just on marketing, but how it supports us long term to be able to succeed in this space. We also have to remember this, and we know it, but the board might not know that you guys get two fifty to ask. I mean, you said it already today, but that's the whole board used to hear that every month. On top of the mm -hmm. rap. And then, and you know, uh, like I said, just FYI. So, to your point, Ben, as far as emotion, um, can we give, I mean, can we give direction to staff to come back with a recommendation on what the, and we may massage that, that level once we have full board. It's just a recommendation and the board can decide. Right. Yeah. And so I think you could you could approve the budget as presented today with the, the changes noted and discussed, and then uh, in the full board meeting, Courtney's presentation will incorporate all those discussions and tee it up for board decision. And I think a recommendation from you 
and from marketing to give us a ballpark of what would be a reasonable, I hate to just leave it out there kind of with no direction because like I said, the marketing doesn't have the direction. So we, it absolutely is for air service lift. And I think we all support that, but I think time for, for the full board, I'd like to see a recommendation sure. of up to, you know, whether it's, we just have to like 40 or 50%, 40%, or whatever 35% or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then with possible augmentations <laughs> later there, you know, so, but I think I, I want to, I think we need to have a specific, more specific number for more discussion. And we can massage that amongst the board of people who know 50% or 25 or whatever. But marketing, you with marketing could give us a clear ballpark of what would be reasonable. That sounds and good. I, and then, if, if I can just weigh in on that, I was I was uh, kicking around a 25% minimum spend uh, held for mitigation, but per you know, opportunity and discussion, but, uh, you know, maybe hold 25% for mitigation uh, with the, you know, the fact that all of it is used for air service support. Uh, and then, you know, when opportunities arise, come back to have that discussion. That way there's at least something being held that kind of goes back to the original use of that, we'll call it, quote unquote, even though all of it's air service, but that might be my recommendation is to, to land maybe on that 25% for board discussion. Okay. Yeah, that works. And then for fiscal year 23, um, since we're in the middle of that fiscal year right now, um, like I mentioned, marketing was hoping to spend up to 600,000. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of go with that as it is, and then use the percentage going forward to guide the fiscal 24 budget forward. But that works for everybody. Good question. If we short feed anybody, is marketing got its full spend that they've always needed? We haven't done anything or had to pull anything back just due to. Correct. Um, every department is either flat or is seeing increases. The only department that was affected by grant funding last year was marketing. And so since we don't have a repeat of that grant funding, we, they wouldn't see a repeat of that in their budget. And that was used towards very targeted initiatives anyway. Okay. okay. Motion. motion. <laughs> put a bow around that. So I think it's a motion to approve the budget as presented, uh, noting the, the various discussions for recommendation to the full board. I make a motion to, uh, to accept the budget as submitted with recommendations as discussed to bring forth to the final board um, in our in meeting. Sure. We have a motion. Do you have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We'll move that forward. All right. Thanks, everybody, for that. That was good, though. I think we'll kind of we'll move this through to the full group. And, um, any, we'll go to item F committee member announcements, reports, and updates. Charles or just plan on plan on a lengthy uh, meeting here in two weeks for the, the regular board. Uh, lots right. to do. I ordered my lunch. Good. Oh, I got Make sure you order your lunch. We had a It's a little busy. Yeah. Yes. Not yet. <laughs> can somebody plan on cocktails? Yeah. Happy hour. We can, we can, we can, can plan, we plan on, on that. Happy hour. Really good slot. Thank you, Gordy, for really all all your work on that trend. <laughs> Staff all the way down. That's a lot of work. Um, any, I'm assuming comments from the floor, public? Nobody, not this time. <laughs> okay. All right. 